How are you guys doing today? Um, we're getting a lot of emails over the last couple years about um, how royalties work. And so I want to give you a quick, um, quick and dirty tutorial on the difference between independent artists royalties and record label royalties. And then you can draw your own conclusion what's, what's best for you. So as you know, the industry has changed over the last three years due to COVID. And what has happened is that the artists who would make the bulk of their money on the road, those revenues dried, dried up because of COVID, unfortunately. It's a very unfortunate. And so um, for a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, that was 90% of your revenue stream just um, snatched away at the blink of an eye. And so we all have to now rethink how we are gonna earn money in this thing they call the music business, the new music business. Um, and so what happens is that, you know, people are, you know, readjusting, they're analyzing, where's my money coming from? Is it coming from royalties? Is it coming from live shows? Is it coming from writer's royalties? And you gotta figure out that right balance that gets you, you know, over the top each and every year. And you can grow. So uh, royalties are very important because royalties are generated while you're asleep. It's called residual income. And when you have residual income coming in, it means you're basically making money while you sleep. It's, it's a sales thing, you know. A record sale equates to, you know, a small check or a bunch of streams generates, you know, revenue. So here's the difference between independent and uh, and being signed to label. We're going to talk about the label piece first because that's the most uh, deepest. So I'm going to give you three numbers. We're going to keep it real simple. Let's say you get $100,000 to make a record and promotion. Okay, $100,000. The royalty rate is 10% of retail. Retail is $10 for a CD. So I'm going to keep it real simple. 10% royalty off of a $10 retail you got $100,000 up front to make the record, okay? So you make the record, record's done, give it to the label, they put it out. What happens? How does the money get divvied up? You know, I've been told often that you shouldn't look at other people's money, <laughs> but when you're in the music business, you gotta look at everybody's money. I'm sorry, that's the one of those things you just absolutely gotta do got to know how everybody is being compensated for your work because remember it's your work think about this um let's just talk about this for a minute concept let's say you are a you are a world-class builder okay and you're working with a developer who also owns property right and let's say the owner the uh, developer gives you a hundred thousand dollars well i'll say a million dollars is it Make any kind of house you want to make. Right? You're like, what? Okay, you start, man, you start laying out, you know, pool in the back and, uh, you know, the best minerals, the best rocks, you know, uh, windows are killing, front doors, you know, everything. Killer patio, three acres in the back. You know, you, you just got the layout and you, you, design the entire development of the house and then let's say uh, the developer says okay now you can live in a house for three years for free You're like really yeah free you got it so you live in the house for free for three years okay beginning of the year four comes he knocks on your door <laughs> you open the door guy says get out <laughs> what am I what am I referring to that's very very similar to um, how a record deal could possibly work. You have X amount of time to enjoy time on that label, and then after a certain point, they own the record. They own the house. So you built the house. It's a beautiful home, but you don't own it. And that's where people get when you get past all the the money and the stardom and the fame and the, and the attention. You gotta look at the numbers. You gotta look at the business piece. You know, if you looked at it as the business of music, it'd be a little different than the music business. 
Too many people look at it as the music business. You should look at it as the business of music and you would see things through a different lens. Okay, so get back to the royalties. So we're gonna make this simple, all right? You're getting 10% of $10, which means you get a dollar as a royalty, okay? One dollar, there's nine dollars left on the table, okay? So just remember that. You're getting one dollar, you got $100,000 to pay back. Now under normal certain, under normal business circumstances, what should happen is that the first $100,000 that's generated from the record should be applied to your $100,000 bill, which means that from that point forth, you get a royalty. So what would that equate to? $100,000, okay, at $10 a pop is 10,000 sales. So you only need to generate 10,000 sales to clear the $100,000 up, $100, up. And then from 10,001 on, you get a royalty check. That's a fair deal, but that's not how the music business contracts are written. The way they are written, and this is where the trick is, the $100,000 they gave you, we're paying that back at a dollar per sale. Not, not, not $10 per sale. So that means it's gonna take you 10 times longer to break that, break off that royalty check. Did you get that? In other words, you have to sell not $100,000 worth of revenue or 10,000 sales. You have to sell 100,000 units to generate your $100,000 at a dollar per unit. You've got to sell 100,000 records to wipe away your royalty, your, uh, your debt, your $100,000 debt, your promotion and your production budget. Now, what is wrong with that picture? Think about what I just said. This is where, this is where the, the numbers, this is where the money gets funny. All right. If you sold 100,000 units at $10 a pop, you generated a million dollars. But in that million dollar revenue stream, you only cleared away the $100,000 that you used to make the record. So you didn't even put that money in your pocket. You probably had to pay producers and musicians and things of that nature. And then you got to pay promoters to promote the record. So maybe of that 100000 maybe you put $20,000 away. Okay, so you just generated a million dollars. Of that million, you only put away twenty grand. Where's the other $900,000? There you go. Bingo. And you're like, man, I'm not making any money. And then now, so what happens is, you're like, you really kind of like, you know, brush it under the table and say, okay, I get it. So I'll just go on the road and make my money and I'll be cool. All right. Oh, then, oh, what's this thing? COVID. I can't even see this bloody thing. But you didn't take away all my gigs. You understand? So you got no royalties coming in because you didn't break even. And you got no... No revenue coming in. Now you're stuck. Now you're scrambling. You know, take care of your family, keep the, keep the lights on. That's the whole deal about being an artist signed to a label. Okay. Now, unless you get some insane amount of money up front, where you can like life changing money, which is rare at this point. The only thing left to do. The only thing left to do. Is um, is to go independent. Okay. Now, here's the beauty of independence. You only have to pay off a distributor to make sure your stuff gets out there. What they call an aggregator. A digital distributor. An aggregator. So, let's say uh, the distributor wants 20%. Okay? On a $10 record. Cool. You made $8. Okay? So, you made $8 over here versus $1 over there, which means you make your money back eight times faster. Okay, so if you spent $80,000 and you sold 8,000 copies, you would have broken even. Or 10,000 copies, 10,000 times $8. Okay, it's a little different than selling a million dollars worth of revenue to just barely clear the $100,000 that you were given. So that's the math. Okay, if you got that, then you'll go a long way. 
because that's really where a lot of artists stumble. And now with, uh, you know, with the business being as it is, you have to be better equipped to understand the numbers. Knowledge is power, as my dad would say, and the lack of knowledge is, whew, it's a whole different trip. All right, hope you guys got a piece of that. If you didn't get it, just rewind the tape, you'll get it. And send me something in the inbox or send me a reply, let me know you got it. Okay, just say, hey, got it. Because it's important that we, uh, we understand the knowledge and so we can be better negotiators when we're talking to distributors and, and record labels. Understand your value in everything that you do, all right? And don't forget to drink your water. Peace.